I just didn't get the use case for ng template outlet. I've seen it used from time to time, but I just never ran into a use case in my own code where I felt like I needed it. So I did what any good developer should do when there is a gap in your knowledge to be solved, I posted on Twitter. And I got a lot of great responses, including this one from Chow, which said, try building a customizable table component and you'll see. So that's exactly what I did. Uh, this is my implementation of a simple configurable table using ng template outlook. So we are going to discuss this and then later in the video, compare it to an alternative version I created with just a standard component that does the exact same thing, only it's much, much worse. But before we get to discussing these solutions, let's first get a handle on the basic idea of ng template and ng template outlet. So the idea is that we can use ng template to create a chunk of a template that won't actually be rendered to the DOM. Instead, we can dynamically control when to display this template. So you can see over on the right here, we can see this chunk of the template, but we can't see this one. So there are a few different ways we can do this. One very common technique, which I use all the time, is to display a loading template if an ng if condition fails. So if I put an ng if in here and I just set that to false, so this is always going to fail, then I can say else my template. So now if this ng if condition fails for whatever reason, um, often because something hasn't loaded yet, like a, like a value from an observable stream, instead of displaying this, it will display this. And you can see we've set this to false. And now the message says you can't see me, which is our template here. But we can also use an ng template outlet to control where the template is displayed. So you can see that I have added this now. And all we need to do is reference the name we gave our template. So you can see that that is being rendered out as well now. And we can even use this multiple times. If we want to reuse that template, I can just paste this out a few times and we get duplicates of this same template we defined. Now, sometimes we might also want to provide additional context information to the template. So this will allow us to show our template configured in different ways. So what we can do is we can add context to our template outlet by supplying this context object. So if we look at this specific container we have here with the ng template outlet, we're saying, I want to display my template and I want to display it with the context of this object. And when we define our template, we can use those values. So you can see here, I have let greeting. So what that is doing is creating this variable I can use called greeting and I'm displaying it there. Now, unlike let message, I'm not actually assigning anything to it. And that's because I'm using the implicit value. So if we provide implicit in this context object, it is going to use that value for whatever variable we define here. And this can be called whatever we want. We don't have to call it greeting. But if we want to use additional values outside of this default implicit value, we can also provide those in the context object. And then we just have to explicitly assign that to whatever variable we create. So I'm using both of those there to construct my message. And I'm displaying this same template in three different ways to display three different messages. So perhaps you can kind of see here that this is kind of like what a component does, where you can give that component a template and when we use that component, we can give it different inputs to control what it displays, or we can project content with ng content. So this brings us to the main point of this video. Why not just use a component? Instead of defining all these weird template outlets, why don't I just create a component that I can pass a greeting and a message to as an input and use that instead? So I want to know what is this actually giving us? And in this specific case that we're looking at, it doesn't really give us anything over a component. Okay, so now let's get back to my attempt at building a configurable table component with ng template outlet. So keep in mind that I didn't reference any existing implementations when I built this, and there are already great examples of configurable tables and grid components out there. So this might not be the optimal way to go about designing a configurable table specifically. The goal here is just to create a simple example to show the power of ng template outlet. And if you're still not convinced at the end of this section, remember later in the video, I'm going to show you the alternative solution I created with just a normal component, which supports all the same features, but it will make you want to pull your hair out. So let's start by looking at the API for this table component. So I've set up three different example tables of increasing complexity using the component I created. And it's the more complex examples that will highlight the benefit of using ng template outlet. 
So the first example just takes in an array of data as an input. The table will automatically use the property names as the title for the columns, and it will display all of the data in the table. So that is that table at the top here. And if I just scroll down to have a look at the data, you can see I just have this employees array with a few objects in it, and it's using these property names as the headers for the columns. So the second time we use the table, it also supplies some custom headers to the component rather than using the property names of the data, but otherwise it just displays all of the data as usual. You can see that here in the second table, we have the exact same data set, but the column names are a bit nicer. And the third example also supplies a custom template for displaying the headers, but as well as that, it also supplies a template for how the rows of data will be displayed. So we're starting to get pretty funky here. Uh, for one of our rows of data, we are using the currency pipe to modify how the price is displayed. And we even add on this extra column to display a buy now button that calls this uh, purchase item method, but only if the stock is above zero. So if this item's in stock, we want to display the button and we want to call this purchase item method when somebody clicks on this buy now button. So how does this all work? Uh, let's focus on the third example because it utilizes all of the features we are supporting. So what we're doing here is we are defining two custom ng templates. So this is exactly the same thing from our simple example. We just have an ng template. Anything inside of here is not going to be rendered to the DOM by default. And we give it a name. This one has a name of headers. This one has a name of rows. And we are going to use that name in just a moment. And we can also see that we're going to be supplying some context information to this particular template because we are using let row. So that means this is going to be passed in whatever the implicit context property is, whatever that value is, we are going to be able to use that using the row variable. So we create these templates and we place them inside of our app table component, which means they're going to be projected into our table component. So if we take a look at the table component itself, we can see that in the class here, we are making use of content child to grab those templates. So we're using the names that we gave those templates, headers and rows, which will allow us to access those within this component. Now I don't want to make this video about view child and content child, but, but if you're not familiar with content child, it is just like view child, which allows us to grab a reference to some element in our template. But content child is going to allow us to get a reference to elements that are projected into our component, which is what is going on here. If we supply something inside of the tags for our component when we're using it, this isn't something that belongs directly to the template of this component. So we can't use view child, but we can use content child to grab a reference to it. Okay, so now let's take a look at the template for our table component. So we're setting up some generic uh, table stuff here, table tags, table head, all that kind of thing. And I've also added some styles to make this look nice. But the important part here is that we are using ng template outlet to render the templates that we passed in. So we are using the headers template here and the rows template here. And importantly, we are passing in the required data into the context object. So we supply this table with all of the data it needs to display as an input. So we can see that here. And then we are supplying that data as part of the context object. And that is what is going to allow our templates to access that data here. But there is one extra thing here. Uh, in this case, I don't want to force the consumer to supply both a header and a rows template. So in our first example, we just pass in the input and nothing else. We don't pass in any templates. So to deal with this, we also set up some default templates. So if the headers template or the rows template isn't defined, we are supplying this alternative template. So I have a default header template and a default row template. And if we scroll down here, we can see these are defined just here. Again, they are defined inside of an ng template, so they're not going to be rendered by default. We can just set up a chunk of template that we want here. And our default header template just uses the keys of the data objects passed in as the headers. And the default rows template just renders all of the information for all of the rows. So if we don't pass in our own custom templates, then it is going to use these default templates. 
And that's it. That is the entire component apart from you know, the styles, which I haven't shown you, but that's not really important for this video. But we are able to support all of our use cases and a lot more just with this code. But still, it might not be obvious the value this is providing. And I think the ng template outlet syntax can look a little bit weird. So now let's take a look at the implementation using just a component and no ng template outlet to see how much worse it is. Okay, so this is the example that uses just a component and no ng template outlet. And as you can see over on the right here, we have a result that looks exactly the same. We're supporting the exact same use cases. So again, let's start by looking at the API. Uh, we have the same three tables again, and the usage here doesn't look all that bad, but there is some kind of funky looking stuff going on in the third example. But if you're not familiar with ng template outlet, maybe this even looks nicer to use than our previous example. So our first case is exactly the same. We just pass in the input. If we want to supply custom headers, we just supply a headers input with an array of the values that we want to use as the headers. But this is where it starts to get weird. For our third example, we need to configure a few things. So we also want to display some custom headers, which is fine. We can just pass those in. But we also don't want to display all of the rows. If we look at the data for our uh, the inventory data, we can see that we have a bunch of different properties here, but we only want to display the item name and the price. So we're not able to supply our own template anymore. So we're going to need the component itself to do this for us. So we pass in an input specifying the rows that we want to hide. But we also need to add that extra column with the buy now button. But again, we can't just supply our own custom template here. So we need the component to configure that for us. And not only do we need to display this button, but we also need to hide it based on whether there is stock available. So this is a very specific use case, and I don't want to make my generic table component implement such specific behavior. So what I did was I created an input that would take in an action button function. And you can see this function down here. So we can run some logic, and if it returns a string, our component will render a button with that as the button text. Otherwise, it won't display the button. So with this setup, it suits the use case of having a buy now button, but it's also kind of generic. So if you wanted a different kind of button, it's going to support that as well. But we don't want to just display the button. We also need to handle when it was clicked. So that is why I also set up this output that is going to emit the data for the row when the button was clicked. And then we can call whatever method we want and pass in the row of data that it was clicked on. So this kind of works, but it's getting pretty messy. And that's not even the end of our trouble. So before in our custom template for this table, we were using the currency pipe to display the price correctly. You can see for the some items, we want to display it in pounds and others I have Australian dollars. So to handle this, I am now injecting the currency pipe into this component and then I am mapping this data before I supply it to the table component to modify the price property to use the currency pipe to display it in whatever format I need. So this works in this case because I don't really need this price value for anything else other than displaying the price, but we are mutating this value. And if we did need to rely on that price value for something else that could make things pretty awkward. So this should give a pretty good overview of why this component is a problem, but let's also look at the actual implementation. And it's not too dissimilar to the ng template outlet example, but now we have a lot of these ng if conditions starting to pop up everywhere. So like here where we are checking for the action button and here, if we are checking if a certain row should be visible. And of course we have some extra inputs and outputs that we need to define for this component. So in my opinion, this is already too bad and not a good modular generic reusable component. But imagine now if we needed to add even more features to this, maybe we want the possibility to add two action buttons. Maybe we want our buy now button and we also want a delete button. So now we are going to have to make further additions to the component to support this use case. This is going to make it even messier and it's going to increase the chance of us introducing regressions and breaking our existing features. 
But if we go back to our example using ng template outlet, this isn't even a problem at all. I can just add in an extra column here, add in my button, and then I can make this button do whatever I want. And you can see we now have that extra column with the delete button. Uh, if I wanted to, I can also add in an extra header for that. And there we go. We've solved a whole new use case without even needing to touch our table component. So one of the key things I've taken away from this experiment is that ng template outlet becomes especially useful in situations where you would otherwise have to provide a lot of weird or awkward configurations for your component to support a bunch of different use cases. So with ng template outlet, the component itself remains a simple and generic component and all of the complexity is handled directly in the implementation of those individual use cases. So we don't need to support every single use case from within our component. So if you're trying to create some kind of configurable, reusable component, then ng template outlet might just make your life a whole lot easier. And Stephen Cooper has a fantastic talk from Angular Connect, which I watched and it helped clarify a lot of these benefits for me. So I'd highly recommend watching that. I'll link it in the description. Uh, just keep in mind the syntax has changed a little since that was released. Okay, that's it for this video. Uh, if you're still here and feel like dropping a subscribe before you leave, it would be most appreciated. I hope you're having a great day and I hope to see you in the next video.